internet. Welcome to film theory, where too much watching won't make your teeth go gray. It'll make them fall out. You might not know this about me, but one of my favorite entertainment genres is puppet psychological horror that comments on the state of modern children's programming. I have very specific tastes. So it'll come as no surprise that I am thrilled that Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is coming back for more. Now, if you're not familiar with DHMIS, the show was a six-part series that felt a lot like Blumhouse got a hold of Sesame Street. Or the Muppets just got a wee bit too sick of being so good and wholesome all the time and went all American psycho. After the series allegedly concluded, I did a two-part theory trying to unravel the messages of the series while also piecing together the lore within the show itself. And that's where things ended two years ago, with DHMIS relegated to the archives of YouTube where it would live in infamy, joining the ranks of Marble Hornets and Salad Fingers as twisted web series that would deliver creepy nostalgia for a generation of youngsters. At least... That's what I thought. Then, out of nowhere, the channel suddenly became active again, dropping a new trailer entitled Wakey Wakey to announce that the show was coming back. Great, great news. Win? It's unclear. Where can we watch it? Also unclear. Maybe YouTube? But given that it's now got the backing of Konako, the production company for Conan O'Brien's show, it's really anybody's guess. What's the show gonna be about? Now that, I think I can answer. Sure, the trailer left a lot of people asking themselves, I wonder what will happen. And it is only 20 seconds of footage. That's not enough time! But it's more than enough. Based on the trailer, I'm fairly confident I can not only tell you the narrative arc of these episodes, but also what the deeper meaning of it all is. You see, it's my theory that this new season is going to be about the current political situation in America. The duck is Donald Trump. And if that sounds crazy, remember that this is a show where a boy wanders off from a picnic and almost ends up in a cult that worships a god who eats gravel. So it's time to pick apart the trailer and see just how deep this rabbit hole goes. To put wakey wakey into as much context as I can, let's do a quick recap of the original six episodes and my theory for what was really going on. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared follows three main characters, the red guy, the yellow guy, and the duck on the children's TV program that the red guy created and that all of them star in. The show is being corrupted by the show's producer, financer, yellow guy's creepy stage dad, Roy. My dad is... A cunt computer. Whose goal seems to be to sell products and torture his son, both of which seem to be the main messages of DHMIS as a whole. The harmful effects that money and advertising can have on art, and the corruption of children's programming by that kind of for-profit agenda. After Red Guy discovers that their show can be made cheaply and distributed onto computers, his head literally explodes as he sees a way forward without the influence of Roy. The duck similarly gets tired of and consumed by the show, the latter, again, quite literally, before the Red Guy discovers the harmful effects that the show is having on kids, yellow guy included. He pulls the plug on the show and the final scene of the final episode reveals that they're moving forward with a lower budget, independent reboot of the first ever episode. So that's where we're coming from. Now, cut to Wakey Wakey, where we get an establishing shot of Clay Hill, the town where it seems these characters live outside of the context of the show. We get a quick shot of Red Guy walking through the forest, followed by what looks like a classic episode of their usual show with the key as a teacher. We get a couple of shots of computer machinery with the duck's face on it, then see a snapshot of a dark room in a state of disarray, and the duck's face on a large screen behind the now-locked gates of Clay Hill. Then we've got ourselves a psychedelic door and a shot of a purple marble. I, I don't know, a lot of people online think that this looks like South Park's member berries. Oh, I love to member to buy member. But it would be a weird reference for them to make. Anyway, Wakey Wakey ends simply with Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, and then the production companies Blink Industries, Konako, and Super Deluxe. It's not a ton to go off of, but if you actually slow it down, pay attention to the details, and think about who's actually making this show, some really solid narrative possibilities start to develop. First and foremost, it's important to note that the room that's partially destroyed in the trailer is, upon closer inspection, the office of Clay Hill's mayor, as we can see by the picture of him on the wall and the identifying medal he's wearing in the picture on his desk. Something happened to the mayor of this town. Notice also that it's discovered by the duck. See this shot of him opening the doors and this duck build shadow when we're actually presented with the room. This is gonna be important later on. The disappearance, or even murder, of the mayor likely prompts the show that Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and the duck are on to do a very special installment 
moment about safety with this key as their guest teacher. As these episodes always go, what probably starts as a basic lesson about the importance of safety and locking things up spins wildly out of control, escalating into a paranoid fervor about security and keeping bad people out. Notice that the yellow padlock that's put on the gates of Clay Hill in this shot looks a heck of a lot like the lock that's hanging around the key's neck in that brief scene. We also see that the red guy is now locked out of town looking in. Why would that be? Because he's now the bad guy. Or at least that's the story that's being spread about him. Let's take another, even closer look at what I assume is the crime scene in the mayor's office. On top of that overturned file cabinet, we see a green scarf with yellow perpendicular lines on it that should look pretty familiar. Sure, we've seen it in previous DHMAS episodes, but based on the ending of episode 5, we know that it belongs to Red Guy, because he is actually wearing it as he walks away from the phone booth. If the duck is the one who discovers the crime scene, maybe he recognizes that clue and uses it to get Red Guy banished from Clay Hill. After all, most of what we see of Red Guy in the Wakey Wakey trailer is him in isolation and outside of the town, as he walks through a forest, is literally locked out of the city, or is just looking through binoculars, again, out in the wilderness. Now consider this. The duck is really the focal point to this trailer. Not only is he the one who discovers the ruined mayor's office, but throughout the trailer we see a lot of imagery pointing to the duck being in control. Look closely at the shot of the locked gate. Behind it, there's that screen with the duck's face on it. It's hard to fully make out the words, but it appears to say the town is safe. So with the mayor missing, there is now a power vacuum in Clay Hill, one that the duck seems to step in and fill. He is an established television celebrity, and if he throws Red Guy under the bus by blaming him for the violence against the mayor, he can use that to improve his credibility and spread the message that he'll be the one to keep Clay Hill safe and thus should be in control. And then there are plenty of subtler clues at play too. When we see the locked gates of Clay Hill, we can also see a surveillance camera with a duck bill on it, insinuating that it's the duck who is behind the security measures. That same kind of duck bill is also on the robot with the drill for a hand that we see in this shot. Then of course there's the shot of what might best be described as a duck machine, with him plugged into various computers and machines like the ones that we saw at the end of DHMAS 6 that were being used by Roy to control and monitor the show and Yellow Guy. It's also noteworthy that this duck machine might be in the mayor's office. We've got yet another green filing cabinet similar to the one that we saw on the floor with Red Guy's scarf on it and the same blue and white tile pattern on the floor floor of both rooms. It appears as though this is near the end of the series, with the duck having created a full-on surveillance state, and with he himself being directly hardlined into the monitoring systems that he's using to keep a watch on everyone in town. As for the yellow guy, well, we don't get to see much of him, but we can tell from one shot that he's not banished from Clay Hill like Red Guy. It's my belief that yellow guy will be the only one who can end up stopping the duck. But to truly understand why I say that and how he's gonna do it, we have to look at some real-life parallels. Becky Sloan and Joe Pelling, creators of Don't Hug Me, clearly had something cautionary to say about television in their original six episodes, and I don't think this one is any different. I also don't think it's a coincidence that a politician goes missing and that it's the duck who ends up filling the role. The narrative of a television celebrity stoking paranoia to claim political power seems like a pretty direct connection to how many people view President Donald Trump these days. Beyond him being one of the most controversial figures in recent memory, there's something to be said about television's role in getting him elected. Obviously, millions of people were already familiar with the Don's personality from his show The Apprentice, but some media agencies reported that the amount of coverage Trump's campaign got had a valuation of $800 million in free broadcasting. And if you include digital coverage, the amount jumps to about $5 billion in free coverage, more than the campaigns of Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Ted Cruz, and Marco Rubio combined. Locking up Clay Hill for its protection also feels very similar to ideas Trump has espoused about closing off America's borders, and blaming the red guy for a crime that he may or may not have committed and sending him out of the city has some pretty direct parallels to Trump's immigration policies. Even the Ducks' government-sponsored security cameras have themselves a direct connection. It's also pretty on brand for the people who are making this show. Becky and Joe are both British, and as Trump's visit to the UK in 2018 showed, many people overseas aren't the biggest fans of his. On a more personal level, Joe has a history of retweeting media and tweets 
tweets that run counter to the American far right or mock Trump and his family, including a video made by the other production company, Super Deluxe, which just so happens to now be producing the new season of DHMIS. And when you actually look at Super Deluxe's history of programming, it would make a ton of sense for the new episodes of DHMIS to be a commentary on Trump. Super Deluxe has put out lots of content over the past couple of years lampooning the Don, including a series made by former president of Mexico, Vincente Fox, where Fox generally attacks Trump. One of Fox's biggest issues? That Mexico will not pay for Trump's proposed border wall. Mexico will not pay for this huge wall. I know that this doesn't directly prove that the next season of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is going to be about the Ducks' takeover of Clay Hill and its parallels to Donald Trump's presidency, but we've got some pretty strong visual clues, a message that makes sense given the show's history, and producers who aren't afraid to lean into this kind of messaging. You might say that the duck becomes the Donald duck. But wait, there's one final point. What about Yellow Guy? Well, for as dark and cynical as the series can be, DHMIS seems to end itself on notes of hope. Independent digital video was the hopeful ending of the first six DHMIS episodes, and now it's my theory that Yellow Guy might just be the one to offer hope of ending the duck's totalitarian reign in this new installment. Not only is he not banished from the town, but in the shot of the duck machine, we see him here, in the corner. You can tell by his ear, only now he has a pink mohawk. Yellow Guy in the DHMIS series has always represented the youth, the next generation, kids. All the evil kids programming from episodes 1 through 6 was directly aimed at brainwashing him. Now in this shot, we see a yellow guy who's changed, who's discovered himself, who's experimenting, and is in a position to pull the plug on the duck's surveillance state. If I'm right about the parallels to today's American political system, this is a direct parallel to how many youth have been outspoken about President Trump's policies, and how many believe that the future of American politics is in the hands of Gen. Z, most of you guys watching, who are known to be the most accepting generation, inclusive, diverse, and eager to change the world to make it a more tolerant place. And that is the wakey wakey that the trailer is referencing. A wake up for America, and a reference to the woke generation. The ultimate question is, will Yellow Guy be able to do it? We'll just have to wait and see. But hey, that's just a theory, a film theory, and the lesson of today is subscribing. Subscribing is a good idea if you want to see the videos when they come out. Subscribe.